Inflation. Uh, this is not an economics class, so you're going to get a simplified version of this, but you don't need to necessarily need to know all the ins and outs and details to understand basically what's going on. What is inflation? You're looking at it. This is a photo from, I believe it's from the, um, I believe it's from the 1990s, okay, which is why the, um, why the resolution is not fantastic, okay? For those of you who maybe don't pay all that much attention, okay, this is unleaded petrol, which is kind of like the standard petrol. And it's going for, yeah, 80.9 cents per litre, right? Now, this was a very, very normal price back in the 90s. I remember learning to fill up petrol the first time I started driving my car, and these are the kinds of prices that um, we expected. Of course, this is not the kind of thing we encounter today. We encounter things more like this, don't we? Um, this is actually, sadly, not that unusual. Like, people do not even bat an eyelid now if they see a price like this. You probably would try to avoid it, but you know what? If you're kind of stuck, you're just going to do it, right? You're like, mm, that's, that's just the price of petrol now, okay? It's so much an accepted part of things that now, um, this is a photo from, actually, I'll, I'll leave this one there. This is a photo from, I think it was late last year, and um, you can see there are quite a few people who are interested in getting to this petrol station because they're all like, OMG, it's less than a dollar. That's amazing. I have, can't remember the last time I saw petrol that cheap. Okay. So what you're looking at here is just one particular example of inflation. Here's a one sentence definition for you, right? What is inflation? Generally speaking, it's the increase in price of consumer goods and services, right? So, broadly speaking, anything you pay the GST on, goods and services, generally speaking, these are all increasing in price. Um, it's important that you note this because this part here, other things do increase in price. We've looked at some examples before uh, that are not consumer goods and services. They increase in price, but that's not inflation. So, for example, We've talked about shares, right, and investments and like real estate. Those things increase in price too, but that's not inflation. That's more like stuff like the property market and other forces like that. Okay. So generally speaking, as we're seeing with petrol, is just one easy visible example. Um, things increase in price over time, right? Over a number of years, things will get more expensive. Okay. Now this really, for me, and this is the the non-required part, but for me, it's like, why would you not ask this? Okay. That's what it is. But what I really want to know is why. Like, what causes this? Okay? Like, if you don't, if you don't care about, like, oh, it's, it's this thing that sort of affects my money day to day, on and on and on, then maybe this, this is not that interesting to you. But I'm going to give you two simplified reasons why, um, why inflation exists, and then I'll tell you some reasons why it doesn't as well. Okay? So I've got one, two dot points, I'm going to name them, and then I'm going to explain them for you. Okay? So number one is what we call, um, what, wait, hold on, what's the word I'm looking for? C, commodity. Commodity supply. Okay, so for those of you who've done commerce, uh, economics before, you recognize the two most important words in all of economics are supply and demand, right? So this is just one half of it. Commodity supply refers to the fact that, well, if stuff is being used up, like say fossil fuels, right? That means that over time, there's less and less and less of it, right? So if there's less stuff, right? If it's harder to find something, like there's less of it around in the world, that means you have to work harder to get it. That means you can charge people more for it. So less stuff is more valuable. Does that make sense? Like when something is scarce, like, you know, the reason why precious metals are precious it's not just because like you can do, you can, they look pretty and all that kind of thing, but there's not that much of it, right? There's like sand everywhere, you know? Any place you go, you can find sand. So it doesn't cost very much. Gold though, you gotta dig and you gotta blow up the ground to find it. There's less of it, so it's more valuable. Does that make sense? So that has to do with how much of the stuff that there is. Okay, so there's the first reason why. Over time there's less stuff, so, okay. There's one more big part of it. There are other things that affect this, but. It's not just how much of the stuff there is, but how much money there is to buy the stuff, okay? Money supply. Now, basically, the idea is um, governments, governments spend, sorry, not spend, governments print money 
all the time. Haha, <laughs> teacher joke. Oh, I've got his five dollars in my wallet. Um, <laughs> governments print money constantly. Okay, now, not a rhetorical question. Why are governments every day, all around the world, why are they printing more money? <laughs> okay, all right, so. So first, first reason might be, okay, we need more money, okay? Yeah, it's a sad moment when your 16-year-old student has more money than you do. Um, <laughs> when you need more, that's, that's an obvious one, but why would you need more money? Like, why do you, yeah. Okay, now, this is interesting, all right, so. Yeah, okay, so this is, again, I'm not gonna get into all of the degree details, okay? But here, remember what I said, like, what causes it? Okay, what causes um, inflation? And the answer is, more money in the system causes it, not the other way around. It's not like we say, ooh, stuff is getting more expensive, I'd better print more money. It's the other way, we print more money, and think about it this way, right? Yes, very good. If you've got more money, right? Yeah, I think this is what you're getting at. If there's more money in circulation, then all of that money is less valuable. So that actually comes back to our original question, well then why do they do it? I'll give you two reasons. Number one, um, it's not so much in our country as say in the US, but money doesn't last forever, right? Like money gets damaged and it needs to be replaced and so on, okay? Um, plastic money is incred incredibly durable, which is great. US money, it's all made of paper. paper. So and it, you know, doesn't yeah. last all that long. So exactly, and you know, people make it, anyway. So wait, 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 wait. So number one, Number one, governments print money. They increase the money supply because they need to replace it. Um, secondly, it actually, so I might, oh, it's the bed here, another color. Um, to replace money, to replace currency really is the idea. Uh, but also, another thing that printing more money does is it drives economic growth. Now this is, I'm gonna so gloss over this. Um, his teachers would be really upset at me being so simple about this, but it's not that complicated to understand. Just think about it this way. Imagine if, imagine if, the amount of money in a country just completely stayed put, like it was locked, it was frozen, okay? So it's like, suppose these five dollars are all of the dollars that exist in this country, okay? And no one's gonna have any more, okay? Um, people are working. They are blowing up the ground and getting stuff out of the ground. They're making value. We call it gross domestic product, GDP, if you've heard those letters before. Okay? So overall, our country is becoming more and more valuable as a country, as people. But there's still only $5, right? So therefore, this $5, which represents all of the money in the country, is now incredibly valuable. In, case, in fact, every day, this $5 is going to get more and more valuable. This represents the entire country's finances, right? So you'd expect because a country is growing and like making new industries and you know, making babies and there's more population, more people are gonna do stuff, this is gonna increase in value over time, okay? So if you're me and you have in your hot little hands the $5 that's everyone's money in the world and it's getting, um, in the country, it's getting more and more valuable every day, what are you gonna do with this $5? Okay. You are not going to spend it, right? Because the longer you hold on to it, the more valuable it is, right? So therefore, here's what governments do. They say, you know what, we don't, we don't want people to do this. We don't want people to take money and just, you know, stick it underneath their beds, okay? We actually want them to spend money. That's, that's what drives economic growth. So if we print more money, the money will be less and less valuable over time, which makes people do what? Spend it. Because if you wait, you're just gonna lose out, right? That money underneath your bed is just gonna become less and less valuable. We want people to do stuff. That's why this stuff like, um, if, you've, if you guys are old enough to know about like government stimulus packages, so like sometimes the government's like, holy cow, the economy's slowing down, we better just give everyone money, right? I can't remember how many years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, the government gave everyone like $500, just like, here you go, have $500 and spend it. That's the important thing. If it doesn't get spent, if it just sits in someone's bank account or in someone's pocket, it doesn't drive any growth. Okay. So, let's just pause. What is inflation? It's that stuff gets more expensive, but there are reasons for that, okay? Now, not everything, by the way, not everything. Wait, if everyone gets $500, doesn't that defeat the purpose? If, like, if you like, take it, then spend it. Yeah, well, if, if everyone got $500, it's like 
still even and it stayed in someone's account. bank account, then yes, it would stay. It, nothing would change. Okay. However, if I then go to like someone who owns a sure, coffee sure. shop, right, and then I spend well, I buy a lot of coffee. <laughs> I spend that five hundred dollars. That's going into someone's. Uh, that's actually going into that business. It's growing. It's going to go into wages, salaries, etc. It's gonna. It's gonna. It's sort of like oiling, oiling the gears of the system, right? Um, it's going to bring revenue to the government because so it just sort of goes round and round and round. It's making stuff happen. Okay. Just think about the opposite of this, right? Suppose everyone just stayed home and no one bought anything. Okay. So you might think, oh, well, look, if money just goes round in circles, right? Like it's it's in my pocket or it's in the hands of the person who owns the cafe. What does it matter? Well, the opposite of it is if money just stays put. If no one goes to the shops, no one goes to the store, those businesses close. The businesses can't survive. It's the movement of money, it's that circulation that makes economic growth happen, right? So even though you would think, oh, there's a net gain of nothing if all money is doing is changing hands, the changing hands is what drives economic growth, okay? That's why there's trade, and that's, like, trade matters, you know? Okay, now, um, here, here's my counter example, okay? Um, We've got things that are inflating costs, but not everything does. This is a memory stick. It's actually a picture of a memory stick I bought about uh, 14 years ago. Okay. Would anyone like to hazard a guess as to how much it cost me to buy this 14 years ago? $5, Five dollars? Six dollars? Karen? About 60. I can tell you in my, in my year 11 hot little hands, I had to part with $180, which I'd saved up for, for like a year, right? I had to part with this to get that because I bought a, um, a little digital camera and all it came with was four megabytes of RAM. So I wanted to take more photos than that, so I bought this. And um, yeah, my parents were like, are you serious? It's just like this tiny plastic bit of thing. Yeah, it, it cost me $100 to get a terabyte hard drive. Okay. So, the other week. Is that more? so, I don't know. So this is something you can get now, right? I, I should point out it's much smaller. Like it pretty much just goes in your computer, and there's almost nothing sticking out. Okay, this today, I went and looked it up. Will cost you one hundred and five dollars. That's still a fair chunk of money. But just compare for a second. How much bigger is this versus this? A lot. It's about a thousand times bigger, a little more, okay? And you just have a look at the price differential, right? Had I bought that amount of storage back then, because it's a thousand times bigger, it would have cost me a thousand times more, okay? So what's going on? What happened to inflation? I thought stuff was getting more expensive. The value of money decreased. Stuff gets easier to make. Ah, so have a look. I've given you two reasons here, right? I've given you two reasons. Number one, money supply. Number two, commodity supply. Money supply, what's happened to money supply over the last 14 years? Let's just look, what, what's been happening? There's more money, right? So that should mean the stuff gets less valuable. So the only way, at least in this scheme, things could change is up here, right? What's happened to this stuff now? There's, you can like just go to lost property and find 10 of these, right? Yeah. They're yeah. everywhere. Just take everyone's your As Akil just mentioned, they're cheaper to manufacture because now China has like Thousands of factories that are pumping these things out. So they're everywhere, so they are less valuable. More stuff, less valuable. Okay. So therefore, that's all of the um that's all of the logic behind it. Very simply. I just say for a long time. I had a I had a Commonwealth Dolomites account, I don't know if they exist anymore. Okay, now just really simply, really simply, um, inflation, because it's just like the same idea of increase in price. We have another kind of thing under this topic that we describe when something starts at a certain value and increases, but it's for a completely different reason, right? We call it interest, right? What is interest? What is interest? It has, it's very, very different from this. What is interest? Yeah, okay, the, the bank that you give money to, they're going to pay you little bits because they get to use your money for a little while, right? So in some ways, this and this are like East and West. They're completely different economic principles, okay? But, and this is the whole power of mathematics, 
The same thing is happening underneath. That's why there's no inflation formula on your formula sheet. Okay? Because the inflation formula starts with some, we want to work out the amount that something's going to be worth. You start with some initial value, and it's going to increase by some rate for some number of months, years, days. You know what that formula is. It's the oh, common interest, right? Compound interest and inflation, the mathematics is the same. Okay? So that's why we don't, like that's the whole theme of mathematics. It reveals that all these kinds of things are the same. 